So I happened upon this workflow the other day that really helps remove background data from image and I thought I would share it. Now my, my normal method was just go through with an eraser and erase all the image data and you can do that and obviously you can make it quite precise but I found that it was a little bit of a chore and I could work much fa faster by using paths. So let me just show you how to do that. Let's zoom in on this area down here and start with a pen tool. So if we click with the pen tool, this is going to create straight line segments. This is not what we want. We want something that's more fluid and more curvy for this type of image. But obviously, if you're cutting out something that's square, like a sign, uh, you might want to use these straight line segments. So let's get rid of those for this part. And what I'm actually going to do is click and drag. And that's actually going to create two handles and make this a bezier curve point. And then if I click and drag from the other side, you'll see it makes a nice smooth curve. Now, what I want to do at this point is create an inflection. I want this to actually change. I don't want it to be straight across. Because if I continued at this point, what's going to happen is we're going to get this weird little shape here because this handle is forcing uh, the curve to follow it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Alt. And when I drag over the anchor uh, handle, it's going to show this convert anchor point tool. So I'm going to take and pull that back like this. And you can actually see that it separates the second handle from the first handle. You can actually do that while you're drawing. So let's take a couple of steps back. Now we're back to this first point and we're going to click again and drag through. But this time I'm going to get the, the lower handle where I want it. I'm going to hold Alt and this will allow me to drag the second handle to the direction that I want. Uh, so let's go ahead and finish this path on around. I'm going to click and drag and again click and drag and then get down here to this inflection point and again I'm going to click and drag one more time you just hold alt and you get that second handle you're going to pull it up and then again this is curvy I'm going to click and drag it around click and drag it around and click and drag and then alt to pull around to the side and create another point so now that I've got here I'm getting a little funny stuff here so so why am I getting this weird curvature in these areas. So I'm going to hold control and that's going to let me to select these paths. And you can actually see what's going on here. These paths are a little bit too strong. So holding the control key, I can actually scale that back. So those uh, those um, handles aren't quite as strong of an effect. And that'll allow me to smooth out my curve and get something uh, much more like, like what I'm intending. Back to the pen tool, we're going to click this uh, so if you have a, a different point selected, you'll see that uh, this this uh, pen tool changes so that you can continue from that last point that you left off. Let's finish making this path around here. And then we're going to finish it up. Let's create a really long curve all the way on the end. Now we've got this swoop down here at the end. The reason why we've got that is because when we started this path, we didn't do anything about this original handle. So if I hold Alt, we can actually pull that handle up and get that back to where we want it. Now that I've got this path, you can actually double click it and name it what you want. And uh, zooming out a little bit, the, you can barely see the path outline here, but it's going around the entire box. What we can do is we can right click, make it a selection. We've got some options here, uh, and I'm going to choose anti-alias, but I'm not going to feather it. Uh, you can feather it if you want something a little bit softer or if you've got something a little bit more imprecise. And also if you want something very um, very precise and you don't want any, uh, you know, any anti-aliasing or uh, semi-transparency around the edge pixels, you can uncheck that box as well. But I'm going to leave it checked for right now. Click OK. And now this is going to give me a selection. And the great thing about this is the path is still there. So if I needed to remove the selection and recreate it in the future, I can. That easy. So that's really convenient. Now that you have the selection, what do you do? You can actually come to the layer. If you, if you want just one specific layer of data, uh, my little trick is to use Control J. And what that'll do is copy just that selection onto a new layer. If we take a step back, now we've got our selection. We can do a copy merged. And the benefit of this actually comes through with uh, the path tool in this selection. Because if you have multiple layers being composited here, you can actually copy all of them. But if we copy this, we can actually go and create a new image. And it's going to pull the sizing in from the clipboard. And now we're going to get a perfectly sized um, canvas for, for this, uh, this 
heart that we just we just uh, picked out of the background data. Now with this, you can save it as a PNG. Note that if you save it as a JPEG, you're not going to get the transparency of the um, of the image in there. So keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, you can take this now that you've got this this tool. You can take and create all these sort of effects and um, have a nice smooth way to get it back in the future. No matter where you're at, you've always got that path there. Right click, make a selection, and there you go. Have fun.